Welcome, Lauren, to the Heart Connection podcast. How are you today? I'm fabulous. How are you? Excited to be here. So excited to have you. I'm good that now that you're here. I was looking forward to this so much. It's evening for you and morning for me, but we made it happen. Yes. <laughs> our our yes. cross-world connection. Yeah. What technology can do today, right? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. So today, like the topic we want to talk about mainly is being a quad right being or what what would you call is it like a being or what i know yeah. it's called variables and stuff in human design but yeah, how would we're, you we're quad right beings <laughs> yeah that's perfect but before we get to that would you mind sharing what you do how you got here what you know what led you to to it like what what's the journey what's your story like how you got to where you are now yeah that's fun um we'll see what comes out of my mouth <laughs> as a five one oh, protector, protector <laughs> who's a quad right we'll see what comes out um yeah so i um i went like did the traditional path like all the way up until college um and i got a job with an oil company out of school And I was like doing a lot of like analytics and then I was in sales and I was like, this cannot be what my life is supposed to be like. Like I would drive up to a client or a customer and I would be in my car and I'd have to like psych myself up to like get out of the car and like go into the building. <laughs> like, and it was just really, really horrible. So um, both of my parents were entrepreneurs. So I actually did like the whole um, rebelling against what I knew and went into corporate. So then I like recognized, okay, I could actually do this other thing that actually both of my parents do um, and try like to do something on my own. Right. And so I started like taking entrepreneurship classes and like building that up um, while I was still in corporate. And so I eventually left and I was actually doing some work around like nutrition out of based on the nutrition plan I was doing. And I stumbled across human design on Instagram. This is like in 2017, 2018. I don't know. A loan account <laughs> was like mm -hmm. talking about human design. And she posted something about a, what a projector was. And I was like, I don't even know what the word projector means, but the description was like, so me that mm -hmm. it like had me in tears. And I was like, I don't know what a projector is, but I'm sure that I am one. Right. And yeah. so like, going down the rabbit hole, being like, okay, well, what is human design and how do I find my type? And like pulling my chart and being like, of course I'm a projector because that resonated so deeply with my soul. Um, and then if we're talking about how we got to like the variables and arrow conversations, I remember actually the first time that I came across variables was in, there's a section at mybodygraph.com, like you get the main chart and it doesn't have the arrows around your head. And I was mm. like, do I have no arrows? Like, I don't have arrows. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> be like oh I'm like you know something's missing but it, I was just in the wrong tab and it, when I found the right tab the arrow shut up and I was like oh they all point to the right that's interesting like I wonder what that means but like it was kind of a blip and and didn't come back to it until it was in the international human design school and getting certified through biz for business consulting through them um and just started talking excitedly like I couldn't help it like I needed to study this information I needed to study more about human design And then I was talking about it because I couldn't help talking about it because once you learn about this system, it's so fascinating. Like I couldn't mm -hmm. help but share. And so then from sharing, I got a lot of recognition and invitations to lead and guide other people by sharing their designs with them. So that's like how the whole snowball effect kind of started with me actually doing human design for a living. Mm. It's And that's how we met, right? And that, yep. And that's how we met. That's how Because we got here. you were a human design guest coach, let's say in a mastermind I was I was a part of, and I always loved our calls. And you actually brought me to this idea. I mean, I was learning about human design, I guess, for the last couple of years. But when you taught me, I was a quad right and what it meant. It made me really emotional because, like you said, it was like. I remember you said something because I'm speaking to your soul because it's 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 the truth for you and it was 
it felt like such a big weight lifted off my shoulders pretty yeah. much because I was like, oh my God, this is like so me and this makes so much sense. So can you maybe talk a little bit more about what it actually means to be a quadrat? Yeah. So um, in human design, I hear often referred to as like cognitive architecture because it has to do with our awareness and our consciousness. So the variables or quadrate, like what the heck that, that means. So variables are the arrows that are around your head in the human design chart, and they can either be pointing left or right. And left in any of the arrows just means a more strategic um, way of viewing the world, taking in information in the world, like it's strategy. It's like more active, right? And then when it's pointing to the right, it's more passive and receptive. So when you're saying, okay, all four arrows or all four variables, point to the right, what you're saying is you are, you have a passive, receptive mind, brain, body <laughs> that you're taking in everything around you and you're not designed to be strategic. And I think that that part of design for me was the hardest thing to grasp because we live in a mm. world dominated by and obsessed with <laughs> strategy mm. I'm kind of feeling my throat <clears throat> kind of come up there a little bit something's clearing in my throat chakra <laughs> but um yeah it's it's really really fascinating and you know it's like when we talk about human design we talk about type strategy and authority and what type strategy and authority does is it, it gets us to what is correct for us, right? We're moving correctly. We're operating our form, our body correctly. Um, it guides us going in the correct direction for us, what's right for us according to our body. And what variables do is kind of get us to the correctness as far as mind goes. And this is something that I'm like actively deconditioning in myself. Um, I'm currently enrolled in Brayton, shout out to Brayton. Um, Brayton's receptive emergent immersion which actually receptive meaning like your mind variable, your, your upper right variable is turning right. But what actually happened within this round is that all of us that are there are all quad right. So it's actually becoming this fun quad or quad right immersion. Um, so I don't know if I even answered your question <laughs> there, but basically <laughs> what, what quad rights are here to take everything in um, our brains, Are take, they're, they're just like processing so much information. We're not designed to focus. And the moment that we try and like focus or push our brains to do something, we're kind of creating this like lack of well-being within our physical bodies. And Ra talks a lot about this in his lectures on rightness. So we can talk about going like how that goes to the thyroid and how we'll have like maybe problems metabolizing food or problems with our weight or problems with not enough energy and feeling really burnt out. It's because like we're trying to force our brains, our consciousness to do things, our brains, our bodies, the red arrows and our consciousness, our mind the black arrows to do something that it's not designed to do. So when we force and force and force and force, it's like, it's like putting somebody in glasses that aren't meant for them, right? Like what's going to happen is you're going to get dizzy or you're going to get headaches. Or you're going to feel nauseous, right? Like, because you're doing something that's quote unquote corrective, but it's not actually corrective for you. Mm. I think that's like, fun. what you mentioned is literally everything I went through, like weight problems, problems digesting food digestive issues food intolerances thyroid issues like all different things oh, no. like, is this the first time you heard that those were related to rightness well pretty much but like <laughs> I mean I've done I mean I healed all of these things or most of the, like pretty much I healed all of them already like along my journey but it's interesting that it's actually connected to the quadriteness I didn't know that yeah, it's, I mean, it's really fun, right? Because uh, what we say Burn about, out. right, yeah. <laughs> is because we're taking everything in, we're receptive. So we, it's almost like we're, and I love how Brayden describes this, like we're a deep well of information. Like we have the knowledge, we have the source information. We've read it, we've studied it, we've seen it, we've experienced it, we've observed it. We're here observing, right? We're not here to be observed, we're observing as quadrites. And so we have this deep information, but we don't know what we know until someone pulls it out of us. 
Mm. And so I think that that's, what's really powerful about having, you know, the left and the right in the world operating correctly, the left would, could quote unquote should, I hate using the word should, but ask the right a question and let us just go right? Like let whatever needs to come through, come through because exactly what is meant to come through is going to come through, but we're not designed to like be put under pressure to do strategy and to like be like the left. So if we can allow ourselves that differentiation, which is the whole freaking point of human design, right? Like we're here to be our own unique expression of energy. If we are both allowed to operate without trying to fix each other to be like the other, we can work in real beautiful harmony together. Mm. this is still a bit confusing to me like even even like you know with my strategy as a generator to respond and not not like being like not being strategic it's like so what am I supposed to do just waiting around until like things come to me until someone comes and pulls things out of me or Mm -hmm. what, what does it mean actually and how like what is is there like is something more important is more more important that I'm a quad right or my strategy or an authority or my type or you know like is is there like a hierarchy in human design um I don't know what what like the official human design gods would say (laughs) to me it's like you're a quantum right so like no no one piece is like you're not one piece of your design, you're all of it together. And so one of the things that I love to look at, is like type strategy and authority and like the quadrateness. Okay. So how can all of those things weave together? So for you, right, you're a generator. And so generators are here to do things that are deeply satisfying to them. You're here to be, you wake up with a full tank of energy, a full tank of gas in the morning and use it in satisfying ways throughout the day and go to bed delightfully exhausted, right? Like that's, that's the, the brilliance of the life of a generator. And so for you as a quad right generator, what could it look like to do the things that you enjoy doing and respond to life when it comes to you while you're doing Mm. those things, right? And then as a quad right, not being super structured about it, like from nine to 10, I'm going to do this. And then from 10 to 11, Mm. I'm going to do that. Like (laughs) structuring and calendaring and like sitting down at your desk and forcing yourself to do quote unquote work and like things like that. If that's supportive to you, if you feel good doing it, great. But but most people that you chat with <laughs> are quad right. It's like it feels like death because it kind yeah. of is to your your consciousness and <laughs> to your brain. Mm. Um so so what would it look like for you to like respond to and interact with and weave through your life and know that it's coming to you because that's a receptive that's the way that it works Mm. yeah that's something even I think thanks to you I realized and I'm doing this summer experiment we talked about this before we started recording because I was guided to pretty much like to start deconditioning all the things that learned that led to me getting burnt out and exhausted and unmotivated and all of these and overwhelmed and all of these things because in the past I was trying to be strategic because that's what most people tell you you're supposed to have strategy yeah. in business God, and you- have a plan hit the plan get the yeah. goal Here, what are your steps to get the goal work backwards yeah <laughs> exactly but can you you know like can you actually benefit from some kind of structure as a quad right? Or is it like better not to have any structure at all and just go from moment to moment moment and see what feels right or what feels good? Yeah, I'm gonna give you a really annoying answer, and that's gonna be follow your strategy and authority. <laughs> right so following your and and that's why I'm like it's you're like okay well what's the hierarchy of it it's like they blend together um you know so and I also think it's like really important to recognize that okay well we do live in a strategic world so like what is the least amount of strategy we can get away with you know while still operating on this plane or having people come in that are strategic to support us in those systems and strategies so that we 
can live like on this plane while being as right, as receptive as possible. Um, so like, for example, the way that that looks for me as a quadrate in scheduling my week, for example, I don't mm. schedule my week. <laughs> I'm like, mm. I know high level things that I'm like working on, excited about programs I have running, but I try and have no more than like five hours of calls per week mm-hmm. because those calls are requiring me to sit down at my computer and focus mm. essentially. Right. Um, so if, if I'm like, okay, if I can minimize that and create more space to flow and to be in that energy of whatever comes up is the correct thing that comes up. Mm. That's the kind of the way that I play with it. So mm. I, yeah. And, and I, I want to caution anybody who's listening to this around like making yourselves bad or wrong or holding themselves to like this perfect standard of like, I can't do anything strategic, <laughs> right? Like, okay, let's play and operate and experiment with what feels good. What feels restrictive? Where does your body, like, what does your body feel good doing? Right. And like allowing ourselves to like play within that versus holding ourselves to these really strict standards that like might not even be possible. Yeah. Mm. And what if you want to, it's probably not the right word to plan like a launch or a program or something. Like, how do you go about that as a quad right person? Like, what would be a good way to go about that? Yeah. So I love to look at this like with the type involved as well, right? So like you're here to respond. So you're doing the things that you love to do that are lighting you up, like you're flowing with it. And then you're okay, like as a quad right, like you're, you're in flow, right? You're not strategically planning the things that are, are going to bring you joy. You're just like, following the instinct or the impulse, like the, okay, this is satisfying. This is satisfying following the satisfaction. And then there's something that comes up that you're responding to. It's like, yeah, I want to do that. Okay, cool. (laughs) Like, can you, and it's going from there, right? It's saying, can you follow your type, your strategy and your authority with, while still allowing yourself to flow. And I think the thing is with like launching and thing and stuff like that, I think it's powerful to have support. Um, Mm. So that you don't have to do those strategic things. Um, Like my assistant is doing like my emails and she's doing, you know, I, I have all of these like pieces of content as a projector, because I'm here to share excitedly about my work in the world and be that visible lighthouse is my type and strategy. So I'm sharing excitedly. And then people recognize me like you did invite me to this podcast and invite me to things to lead and guide them. And so if I'm already doing this part, the showing up excitedly part, where can I bring in support to do the rest of the strategic things that like I am not designed to do, I don't do well, and I like hate doing and make me sick, (laughs) essentially, Mm -hmm. Um, which is planning, creating reels, like doing the captions for them, like planning them out. Like I'm giving you like a really specific example Mm -hmm. on the top of my head, but like that's all strategy. And so I can bring in support to do that. It doesn't mean I'm bad or wrong because I'm not doing that. It means that it's getting done and it doesn't have to be me um, Mm. who's doing that. So it's like, if there is something that actually has to get done, do you have to be the one to do it? Mm. Also, I don't know if, if it's like, if it relates to that or if, if, you know, but like for me, when I, when I, when I was launching and I was trying to like prep everything in advance and plan everything in advance, it never worked. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm in my business by myself, I don't have any help. It was easier for me to, when I felt like next week sounds good, like launching instead of like trying to plan in advance that never worked. Like even even when I asked my intuition, you know, when would be a good time to launch, it never happened on, on like when I tried to ask too much in advance. Mm-hmm. And then when I was already going through the launch, it was much more aligning for me to do it one step at a time, one day at a time, instead of trying to write all the, e- all the emails in advance and do like prep everything in advance in advance and all of these things like step by step day by day and yeah that seemed my, way more aligning than trying to like prepare everything 
in advance yeah. and yeah there's um one of the raw lectures or this is like really i think relevant to what you're sharing is like you said something something around the the sentence of like anything that a quadrite does is only a medium for their creativity it's like it, it's not a so that it's not a like in order to it's not it's not strategic <laughs> like it's mm. not you know which strategic has an inherent like so that um built into it and I think that that's really interesting that you're sharing that because it's it's like when left up to your own devices without the have to's and the shoulds you likely did a lot of the things that you were quote unquote supposed to do <laughs> within mm -hmm. within a quote unquote plan or of, of a launch but it more came through as flow of satisfaction than this is the plan that I had to, mm. to create because you're following your type, your strategy and your authority because that you're going to do what's correct. So no matter what, it's correct for you. And mm. I think that that's like something I have been loving to share with clients lately is like really owning that, like the decision you made was correct. Mm. So if you're following your authority, the decision you made is correct. And so sometimes the immediate effect of the decision is not always quote unquote, like what we want or like the best possible outcome but it's what you need what needed to happen so if we can like shift that belief of like oh my gosh I don't know what I'm doing or I don't always make the right decision or was that my authority it's like you followed your authority is correct <laughs> like I always make blind decisions mm. I don't know where that yeah. came from but quad rights aren't linear so we're just gonna <laughs> let this flow <laughs> and one other thing that I thought was important for me that you shared with me before was that it's also important for a quadrite and for me as a triple split I think as well that like what people I surround myself with mm -hmm. and even like when launching or when working with clients or work, when creating content or even anything else like because they're supposed to pull it out of you right or as a quadrite yeah so we are like the source or the well of information and i love the way brayton talks about this um because we're taking everything in we're a deep source we're a well and so when we had people ask us questions we go into the well and we like give that source of information we tell them the things that they need to learn or that they're asking about um and so we are basically the people that we surround ourselves with. If people are asking us really silly questions, like dumb questions, then we're like giving them the answers to the dumb questions, right? Like versus like being around geniuses, I think is the, the example that Ra uses, giving me, being around geniuses and geniuses asking you questions, you'll also be able to create the, and give the depth of the genius. Um, so it is really impactful, like who you're surrounding yourself with who you're allowing to access the well of information, who you're surrounding yourself with. And for you, I think, especially, don't you have an undefined G center? Yeah. Yeah. So your undefined G center is like who you're around is extremely important. I think yours is completely open too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's majorly powerful and you're a triple split. So, um, those different groups of people are really impactful and important. So just like all over your chart, it's like place and people are very important. <laughs> but mm -hmm. for quadrates as well yeah so for example like if this interview was done by someone else and they would ask you the same questions you would probably say different things or maybe a little bit differently it's more of like you would ask that you wouldn't ask the same questions as someone else mm -hmm. right oh, that's right <laughs> that's right because they'd be asking through their perspective through their differentiation and like that's the whole point of design is this is the science of differentiation like we're um we're not here to be like homogenized we're not here to all be the same which is like felt i think especially in the online business like world homogenization is rampant like everybody's creating like little mini me's out of their programs and stuff and so i don't know that's my my perspective my power of you says that but um <laughs> but it's it's just really interesting to be like okay well if you are your own differentiated being who is that quite right who is in flow who has received all of this information and you're surrounded by people who are asking you questions it's like really allowing yourself to access that consciousness that awareness 
Mm. You mentioned before that we're not meant to be strategic, that we're meant to respond to life and be more like intuitive. But one of the fears sometimes I have, and and I think that might be related to conditioning as well, and maybe other people might be wondering as well, how do I get any work done if, you know, I'm supposed to only do the things that are fun and that feel good? And how would I ever get any work done this way? Yeah. So I want to clarify because you're a generator, you're here to respond to life. Mm. Um, and you're also a quadrate being, so things come to you. But um, yeah, I think like I think there within the question is, a little bit of the conditioning as well, what you mentioned, right? It's like, how am I supposed to get any work done? Mm. It's like, okay, well, is work the value? Is work like why is work the only importance? And and again, we live in the three D world, so I'm very aware of that. Um, but looking at it and being like, okay, lefts are really defined by like what they do, like their strategy and like what they get done, mm. and all of that. But right beings are here to flow and be receptive. So because we live on the 3D plane and I'm a quad, right? Right. So those are the types of things that you get to play with of like how much structure feels okay. Like how can, how much can my body handle? Like, do mm. I really need to be doing these structure things? Taking like inventory, like where, where is the structure? Like kind of auditing yourself, right? Of like, what am I doing that is super structured that doesn't necessarily feel good? And do I have to be doing me this in order to have a business or whatever. And even that within itself, I'm noticing as I'm saying that that question is very strategic. Mm. So you can drop all of it and just flow and trust wholeheartedly that it's going to come to you. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure I still have a lot of conditioning around this. Like the first thing that, that came to my mind is how am I going to make money if I'm not going to work, you know, like if I'm just going to be, waiting or you know it's and I know it doesn't work the other way because I was trying to be strategic and it didn't work and it led to burnout and overwhelm and all of these things but for the mind it's still quite difficult to grasp I guess or to understand yeah I totally get that I mean I'm still deconditioning from this as well and I think it's like a lifetime of it I don't think you're ever like fully like okay mm -hmm. I'm down and deconditioned yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, check mark um and even like talking with Brayton in um quad right receptive receptive like class um I did a class with him a year prior a year earlier than this class started And I was so much more strategic then, like looking back and like the way that I had like color coded sticky notes to be like, what needs to get done? What do I need to accomplish? Right? Like it, it's like ways in which we find ourselves operating in the world to be of the world. And then like, what can we let go of? And some people are totally fine, like completely jumping off the the cliff and being like, I have no plans from now on. I don't know how I'm going to make money. I'm going to go live in the woods and I'm going to be a receptive being. Okay, cool. Like <laughs> do that. <laughs> um, I think that there's space for all of it. And that's one of the best things about human design is that it's an experiment. And I, I think too, like what's interesting about these arrows is it's not just the arrows, right? It's not just that we're passive. It's not just like, um, that were receptive, that were taking everything in from the body side and the mind side, the red side of the arrows and the black side of the arrows, but there's so much more information beneath the arrows. Like our determination is beneath the arrows, which is the way we digest food and information, which is going mm -hmm. to be passive naturally because it's the right arrow, but like there's depth there, right? Your cognition, the way in which, um, like your, your super sense, for example, so like mind's inner vision. So what is, um, picturing things, in my mind look like versus somebody who would be left facing would be outer vision or, or one of the other, you know, variables. So environment, um, you're in a passive environment. Like what does the environment look like for you? Um, underneath the personality side arrows, the black arrows, there's your motivation, like what you're motivated by. Um, there's the sense, there's your trajectory, there's like your view there, like there's so much mm -hmm. 
beneath the arrows. And so I think that's interesting is that when we're looking at, okay, yeah, you're a quad right, you're receptive and like, yeah, that's what there. <laughs> yeah. And there's, and there's also like ways to look at like, am I in alignment with this or am I in, or am I in transference, which transference is like out of alignment. And I think that that's, that's been really helpful for me during this process because it can kind of like give me clues. So I'm not being like, am I being strategic? Am I not being strategic? Right. Like I don't want to, <laughs> but it's more like, oh, okay. Am I in alignment with my motivation? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm not in transference. Awesome. Or, Hey, I'm in transference. This is not correct for me. Move back over. Hmm. Rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Would you mind sharing maybe for some of the people that don't know what like each arrow actually means? Like if like some people might have like three right arrows and just one left or, you know, like whatever, like what, what each arrow actually means. I know like one of them is if it's pointing right that I know that I'm a non-specific manifester, but about yeah. the other ones I don't actually know that much so if you wouldn't mind sharing what actually each arrows uh, of the arrows like means yeah, for each there, person. there are over like 16 combinations oh, of okay. them. um but in general like the the top left arrow is all around like your determination so the way you take in food and information um the bottom um red arrow so on the left still is your environment. So what environment you thrive in with that really comes into um, play more after your Saturn return than before it, which I think is really interesting. <laughs> um, and then on the black side arrows, you're this like your personality side. So the upper right is your personality, and that underneath that is like your motivation and your sense. And then the bottom right arrow, which is then again, the black arrow is going to be your view. Um, and that's the one that's like kind of in pop human design culture. We talk about like the quote unquote manifestation, um, mm -hmm. being passive or active or, um, non-specific or specific. And so the reason that they're using that language, if we look at like the science of, of human design, the science of differentiation, right. It's, it's that if that arrow is pointing to the right, you're more passive, you're receptive, you're here to take things in. Mm. So it's not about being specific. So if that arrow is yeah. pointing to the left, it's not about being specific and strategic about what you're desiring. It's more about like getting into that passive energy. So what does passive energy look like? Well, it looks like the feeling, right? Like mm. what are you actually, what do you desire to feel? And what can you feel right now? And how can you call that to you? And that's like non-specific, mm. quote unquote, manifesting. <laughs> Yeah, that was quite freeing for me as well, because I was always trying, like people tell you to create a vision board and, you know, write down your call, uh, your goals and your intentions and all of these things. And it never worked for me. Like I never was able to manifest any of the things on my vision board or any of the specific things. So do you know, like what would be a good way to go about manifesting as a, as a quote right being? Yeah. So, I mean, following our type, our strategy and our authority, <laughs> we get us like exactly what we desire uh -huh. um, and, and true desire, right? Not like what we see other people having and then like we think we want. Um, mm -hmm. which is a powerful thing. It's like, why are we entering into the achievement to get a desire that we don't actually even want a lot of the time? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the first part that I'll caveat, <laughs> um, mm. but then within like the human design communities that they talk about this with like, the, um, I think Jenna Zoe talks about this a lot is the interpretation of it is getting into the energy of the feeling of what you desire. So when you have that thing that you think that you want, <laughs> the, the picture of it on your vision board, like, how are you going to feel? What are you going to, what are you going to call to you? Right. Like it's more mm -hmm. about the feeling that you receive when you get the thing that you want. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's always the energy that always shows up. is like pride. And so it's like, okay, well, when I have the thing that I want, I'm going to feel really proud. Okay. Where do I feel that in my body? Where do I feel that in my body right now? Can I turn up the feeling in my body? Right. And so those black arrows are all around consciousness. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so if we look at that and we look at the law of attraction that says like what we're vibrating at, like the frequency that we're vibrating at, it's what we call to us. So as receptive beings, what are we calling to us? Um, we can look at how to play with that and what can you do to like feel that way now? And likely it's going to be in flow. <laughs> it's not going to be like a planned out thing. Mm. So that's the way that I would look at it. And that's what I, I like to do. as like my manifestation process. It's like, what am I trying to feel? Mm. How can I feel that way now? And then I get to flow. Mm-hmm. Does that resonate for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that actually. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, and actually I think you maybe taught me before in a different context, but it was good to hear it once more in this quadrite context as well. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. One other thing that just popped into my mind was if someone is listening who's, let's say, partner or child is a quadrite being, how can they support us? Mm, That's such a good question. Well, one, not trying to make us focus or like be strategic, um, make it, make him wrong for that way of being, know them, knowing that they're taking in a lot of information and they might need more rest. Um, and then another thing is just like to, to ask, to access the well, right. To, to ask questions of them. Um, it can be really powerful. Because a lot of the times when we, because we can't access it ourselves, right? So it's not like I can ask myself a question and then go into the well. (laughs) It doesn't really work like that. So a lot of the times we make ourselves like feel bad or wrong because we like don't really remember things. Mm. But then if someone asks us, we're like, oh, there it is, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Like, I'm not completely losing my memory. Like, it still exists and it's still in there. So I think that that's... um, something really powerful as well. I would also look like underneath the arrows, like helping someone with their like determination, their cognition, um, their motivation, their view, like helping them dive into that. I think Mm -hmm. one of the things that like when I went to the human design school um, for business consultancy, like the BG5 program, we didn't talk about arrows at all. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was super fascinating because I'm in an environment where I'm learning, like I'm expected to learn, but I'm expected to learn in a very left way, yeah, very strategic way where I have homework and I have turned in assignments and it's just like, it's, that's all left (laughs) It's all versus just like, instead of taking notes as a right being, all that's required of you is presence. Hmm like really being present and taking in the information it's going into the well, um, which can be a really interesting, like deconditioning process, right? Because yeah. school is like all left. I know. I remember, for example, like my father was really like, he always wanted us to perform well, you know, in school and stuff and have good grades and all of these things. And when I was in high school, I started to rebel because I hated it. I hated it. I hated like studying for exams and all of these things. And so I, I wouldn't, I, and I had really bad grades at one point because I just refused to study the things I didn't want to learn. You know, it was, it was ridiculous. Like, and I mean, I, I know I have a lot of conditioning from childhood and growing up. Would you maybe have some tips for people who don't know how to decondition? What would be a good way to go about it when somebody wants to do um, that? From leftness to rightness or mm-hmm. general? Oh, leftness to rightness. Yeah. Um, well, you can say general as well if you want, but yeah I mean for me it's really like it was all around like studying like studying the system um and learning like how my brain worked it's like oh okay like that was really powerful for me um being able to learn it especially as a projector right because like we're here to master systems and so I was like okay I want to study this I want to learn about myself I want to learn why this is so from leftness to rightness um, and then 
I guess if you're like still in an environment where you are being asked to like focus and pay attention or like take notes, like things like that, I would say like, what would it look like to, um, <laughs> to not have to do that, to challenge, to, to experiment with, okay, I'm not going to take notes in this meeting or I'm not going to take notes in this session or whatever. It's funny you say that because I'm an, I'm an avid note taker. Even though I'm a quote, right? I always yeah. felt like it's, I need to take notes. I have like, even now, like when I listen to, even like when I listen to podcasts sometimes or when I do courses, or whatever, I always love, have like notebooks full of notes and stuff. <laughs> this is funny that it's not actually natural or, you know, it's, not how not how I'm supposed to take information in. I always oh, thought I needed to take to. notes. <laughs> yeah, well, well, but so funny. I do that too, right? Like I'll like write it down. But like, have you ever gone back and listened to said? Hardly ever. No, right? And like that's the same thing for me. It's almost like oh, I'm writing it so I can like retain it a little bit. But it's like, do I actually retain it? <laughs> like, do do I already retain it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um. So yeah, I totally feel you on that. And and sometimes when I have like a thought, I do capture it. Like I, I capture it. I like put it in a, a notion board or something. Cause I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose that one. Like that was the good mm -hmm. one. Like I want to riff on that. Like I want to go down that flow. So it's like feeling through like what feels good for you. But I, yeah, I'm really enjoying it, enjoying learning from Brayton um, as a part of my deconditioning process and just even like knowing oh that's a left thing or oh that's a right it's like kind of helps me not judge myself as much because I think living in a left world mm. there's, there's a lot of judgment that can happen because we're not being like everyone else we're not strategic like everyone else mm. where are there some things that were surprising for you when you found out that you were quite right, that were actually, that not just you were doing, but that sort of like part of being a quote right, but maybe you didn't know or you didn't expect, or maybe you realized you weren't doing or that wasn't natural for you? Yeah, I, one of them is like, I love like business strategy. Like I think it's so fascinating. Um, and I love it for like, I love sharing, leading, guiding other people when invited on like other people's business strategy. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really fascinating to me, but like for my own, it's like, yeah, no, it doesn't really exist unless I like bring in support. So that was really fascinating. The other one was like that we're moving more towards like we're going to have more and more right facing quad right facing beings right mm -hmm. um as we move into the new era of like the cross of the sleeping phoenix is just like a whole other conversation but like right now we're shifting background frequencies of the earth <laughs> um for the past 400 years we've been in the cross of planning which is all around like tribal agreements and we're moving into the cross of the sleeping phoenix which is all around like individual empowerment and differentiation and like knowing our design and knowing how is to it, make decisions. Is it the shift that's supposed to happen in 2027 or is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. But we're in the final seven year cycle. So things run, roll in cycles of um, seven. And so from 2020 to 2027, this is like <laughs> the major shift. <laughs> like you can feel it, you can see it, right? And so what's coming in 2027 is a new form and mm. they're called the raves and they're going to be most like quad rights. And so we're about to have an entire like generation mm. of people, beings that the left is not going to understand. Mm -hmm. um, you mean like children that will be born after yes. 2027? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're called the rave children. Whole other like rabbit hole, which is fascinating. <laughs> like we used to be seven centered beings and now we're nine centered mm. beings and that's shifting again. Okay. Um, in 2027 so we're going to start to see so are they going to have even more centers mm -hmm. okay yeah. two oh. additional centers in their hands whoa isn't that cool so, oh i would love to find out more about that yeah so you're like what was surprising i'm like that that was <laughs> that was very surprising to me 
Mm. The raves. Yeah. So it's really important for, I think, for quad rights to, to start experimenting what it's like to not be strategic because we're going to be like a connection point between this type of being, the nine centered being and the raves. Mm. That's so interesting because my inner voice, my intuition has been telling me for the past year or so that there's a new wave of star seeds or light workers or being yeah. coming and I'm supposed to support them. And oh my gosh, stop. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, what does it even mean? You know? And like, now I've been like learning all these things. I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Yeah. Wow. And what perfect like timing to be deconditioning from the strategic way of being so that you can help the next, the next wave. Mm. Oof, that gives me chills. How fun. Yeah, I know. And it's funny, like, the whole journey like I mean I started my journey with like me having all the health issues like we mentioned in the beginning and that led me to me supporting people with healing their, their, their health issues and now I felt like I'm done with that pretty much and I'm supposed to like support other light workers or other healers and you know and now it's like shifting in this direction but I'm like I, yeah, I still don't have all the information. It's still coming, but I feel like it's really connected to this quad rightness as well. It's just making so much sense all together. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. the pieces of the puzzle coming together. That's so cool. Yeah, and you get to follow the satisfaction and the delight. Like you, I think, enjoy like doing podcast episodes, right? And so now like, we're talking about this and you have something to respond to and like mm. investigate and experiment with. And it's just like so fun to watch design unfold, right? You don't have to do your design. Mm. The design does us. Um, I heard that so many times going through human design school, like our design does us. <laughs> it's not something you have to think about all the time. It's just like noticing where am I out of alignment? Or can I decondition to get back to self more and more and more? Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing during since the beginning of summer. That's what I've been guided to, to go back to basics and back to like where I started pretty much and, decon and decondition again, because I've done already like so much work in the past 10 years, but now it feels like it's a new level new wife and because we we live in such a noisy world right and there's like so many things we are learning about and so many new modalities and methods and all of these things and it gets so overwhelming <laughs> because we're taking it all in right all of it and uh, most of it's not even important to us like those are the things that like oh that's great and cool but then there's also like the door color and like all that other stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it feels like getting ready now for for the next phase and yeah being and yeah being in the experiment of human design life whatever you call it yeah yeah I don't know to me it's like it's I don't think you need human design and if it doesn't feel correct for you then like that's great but to me it's like oh my gosh experimenting with it and actually noticing what I need to quote-unquote decondition from and the impact that that's had on the other side of the deconditioning and like how much more because I'm a projector how much more successful I feel mm -hmm. and success not meaning like the money in the bank account although there's that too but it's it means something different to every person and like for me I'm like living my embodiment of success and so it's like how could you not love this this way of living this experiment um mm -mm. but there is like I feel like this dark night of the soul sort of thing that happens right after you yeah. learn it and you start your deconditioning and you're like this is so uncomfortable <laughs> like 
yeah this is so, this is hard and there's still like managing your mind right mm -hmm. like even during the deconditioning process and like show like when the mind throws things at you that you're like oh I see I see you I see that undefined will trying to prove yourself I see it and now I get to manage the mind that that's not necessarily what needs to happen right now so mm. yeah no definitely I was gonna say something and I forgot but it probably <laughs> wasn't Mine was, uh, totally off what we were talking about I feel like but I was just like validating what you were saying I was like yes yes <laughs> <More."> <laughs> oh yeah that's right I was gonna ask can any human design type be a quadrant yeah, yeah. I and it could be wrong but I believe so yeah because mm -hmm. it's not dependent on type so yes okay But are there, because I found like when I was trying to find information about quadriteness, I found that most of the people they talk about it are projectors. And even I feel like most of human design coaches are projectors for some yeah, reason. Yeah, because we're like, oh my God, this is life changing information. I thought <laughs> it was broken my whole life. But in reality, I'm a projector. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then to be a quad right projector on top of it, it's like, oh my gosh, my whole life makes sense now. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to look at like actual data of how many people are, are quad rights. Maybe that exists somewhere in some database, <laughs> some MMI software. Um, but we're actually going to have more and more quad right rights being born especially mm -hmm. to 2027. So um, yeah, any type can be, I, I know some manifesting generators who are, I know generator you, um, projectors. I don't know if I know any manifestors or reflectors who are quad right, but I'm sure they're out there. Hmm. Yeah. And if they listen, if they are listening, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm so excited that we got to do this because I feel like there's not enough information about it out there. Like I was like, I, I heard about it from you and then I found a few more sources and you told me about Brighton as well. But other than that, there's not that many. Yeah, there's some um, raw lectures on brightness, but he's a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend for all unless you're like studying um and you want to study it which a lot of projectors do right want to study and I'm a five one so the first line in me is like give me the source material I want the source material <laughs> um but yeah it's really funny like a lot of people when Bra the you know the founder of human design when he talked about there being the shift until 2027 and about quad right. Like a lot of people were talking about how he was like doom and gloom and like, they're like, oh, you're so pessimistic. Like the, it's not going to be that bad. <laughs> and then <laughs> 2020 happens and be like, mm, yep, Rob was right. Like things are shifting. <laughs> the world is mm -hmm. shifting. We mm -hmm. need the right, the source. So. Yeah. Oh, I remembered what I was going to say before. I was going to say, I mean, I, I've been learning about human design for probably the last couple of years or so, and it's just making so much sense for me. And a lot of ways, I mean, it feels like I already know a lot of these things, but they just sort of like a confirmation for me. And a lot of the things I know, like I have a strong connection with my inner voice, you know, and I get a lot of information, a lot of knowing, like intuitively. And then it's like a confirmation for me that when I hear it from you or, you know, like when I read about my human design, it, it's like, yeah, of course, of course. It's, it's like this. Yeah. So it's fascinating to me, like what, what all of the things you can tell from your human design and how you meant to live and yeah. Amazing so good it's yeah it's like um 
here's a blueprint to your energy. And here's how you like, it's like, you know, uh, that you'd love to use this example in design school. It's like, here's your vehicle user manual. Here's how to use this body that you're in for the most effective ride, mm. <laughs> you know? And it's like, we've, we've got the user manual and we can use it. And like, nothing's wrong with us. We just have different, we're all in different cars. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much Lauren for being here I know you work mainly with projectors that you like you used to do other things as well but you now you want to concentrate mainly on projectors if there's any projectors listening do you want to share maybe where they can find you how they can connect with you maybe what what you're offering at the moment. I know you have an amazing retreat coming up that I was I saying, if, I wish I was a projector so I could go. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, I think I just, before I go back, um, before I answer, I want to go back to the, the, the way you phrased the question, because it's like really illuminating to me as well. It's like, you said, I know you're concentrating on projectors right now, which is such a strategic thing. Right? <laughs> like even that it's like, oh, you're focusing on projectors or you're concentrating on projectors. And I just like want to share like the reason that I'm offering things for projectors is because I keep getting recognized and invited by projectors. So <laughs> like if you wanted something from me, humans of any type, okay, you're welcome to recognize and invite me um, and I will take it through my authority. And if it's a yes, amazing and if it's a no okay I'm sorry right. keep it <laughs> right? <on>. yeah <laughs> but I mean I think I think that's really an interesting kind of like thing to say and no from like a quad right being it's not that I was like okay I'm gonna go and I'm gonna like only focus on projectors for a while I was doing that with my mind and I was like nope I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this to myself I'm not gonna focus I'm not gonna you know force it and be strategic I'm gonna follow my strategy and my authority and so like strategy and authority over and over projectors 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 and I was like okay well like let's just like create some sort of container for this um get some support in it and be able to flow within the context of projectors so yes long story long um I have three things one of them is a projector success workshop um where I break down really how to opt out of the generator world that we're living in if you are a projector still operating in that paradigm. Um, and then two, I have a projector portal, which is like a DIY program, which is like all the things that I wish would have wished I would have known about being a projector, especially in business. Um, hours and hours of content. Like when people are in my DMs and they're like, tell me what it means to be a projector. I'm like, I have so much to say. I don't even know where to start <laughs> because I am a quad right. So ask me a specific question or like, if you want the deep well, that's where that lives. Um, and then the, uh, I have projector playground, which is my three month mastermind for high level projector, like high earning projectors, where we're having like deep conversations of what it looks like to actually live your design within business um, and do the experiment together without being kind of like pulled off track by the gener way, generator way of life. And then finally, I have Projectors in Paradise, which is a retreat in the Dominican Republic in October, mm -hmm. um, which will be so good. Sucking up all the goodness in Aura, um, talking around safety, being visible, um, and so much more. So those are all, all of the things. And yes, I know they're all like projector based, but that's who's inviting me. So <laughs> do it. And if they, if people wanted to connect with you, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Lauren E. Armstrong underscore, um, or on my website at laurenarmstrong.com. Okay. And we will include the links in the show notes as well. <laughs> awesome. This is so fun. I, I feel like I, I didn't have as many questions. I wasn't like asking questions back as like deep within my well. So, so thank you for your for your beautiful questions, I know that that's not a natural. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. And I mean, I love learning about this and I'm so happy that you accepted my invitation and came on to the podcast to talk about these things because it's so fascinating, so interesting to me. And I loved having you and 
I hope maybe one day you will do something on quadriteness, maybe a program. Mm. Well, I'll have to bring Brayton in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. Mm. I hope you have a beautiful, flowy rest of your day. <laughs> you too.